A lot to get to today. Hi, I'm Johnny Mack with your daily comedy news. Before I get distracted, let me point out Eliza Schlesinger, Hot Forever, today on Netflix. John Oliver took a shot at the NFL on last week tonight. Oliver's main segment was on crime reporting, noting how local TV spends a disproportionate amount of time on crime stories. And in there, he took a shot and said, there's already primetime programming where people kill themselves for our entertainment. It's called Monday Night Football. Happy concussion season, football fans. It sure feels like this sport maybe shouldn't exist. As I mentioned, lots of big stories, but I want to lead with Judy Tenuta. So I saw Thursday night Judy had passed away at age 72. I had already recorded the entire weekend plus Monday. I had to travel over the weekend, so sometimes I have to accommodate my own schedule. And I was like, oh, I feel bad that I'm not talking about this one. Tenuta's manager, Roger Paul confirmed that she passed away of ovarian cancer. Judy Tenuta was 72. In a statement, he said she was a very funny, amazing performer and added how it was always a happy time to be around her. Much of that rambunctious, zestful character that she portrayed on stage stemmed from her lively personality. Judy was an ardent performer. She was blessed with a uniquely keen wit, a propensity for outlandishness, and the ability to concoct wild worlds of fantasy and fun that gave you permission to explore your own imagination. I have had the joy and privilege of working with Judy well over 20 years, and she never ceased to surprise or amuse. Judy was a rare gem, a true walking cherry bomb. Depending on her agenda for the day, she could lift your spirits in a whirlwind of laughter, or she could drive you bloody mad. And then somehow, when you needed it most, she could give you a call and make you feel enamored and understood. Perhaps that was Judy's intention with her comedy all along, to alleviate the stress and pain from our lives and introduce us to our special hiding place where we can escape from it all. Judy Tenuta had a friendship with Weird Al. She collaborated with him on and off over the years. She appeared on the Weird Al show in 1997. Weird Al tweeted... Devastated to hear of the passing of my dear, dear friend, the lovely Miss Judy Tenuta. I can't believe she's gone. Earth has truly lost a goddess. I remember hearing Judy. She was a frequent guest on the Howard Stern show, probably in the WNBC days and early K-Rock days. She was always fun. I met her once. She was a guest on Kathleen Madigan's radio show. So got to spend, uh, you know, a little time with her in a studio in Los Angeles one evening many moons ago. Judy Tenuta passed away at age 72. So the big news making the circles, you probably saw this because even my wife did. From Entertainment Weekly, Deadpool actor TJ Miller says he'll never work with Ryan Reynolds again. Quote, it's weird that he hates me. TJ Miller played the blunt bartender Weasel in Deadpool 1 and 2. TJ was on the Adam Carolla show and said, as the character, he was like horrifically mean to me. But to me, as if I'm Weasel, he was like, you know, what's great about you, Weasel. You're not the star, but you do just enough exposition that it's funny. And then we can leave and get back to the real movie. TJ said the jab took him by surprise. I just kind of listened, thought it was weird. And then I got off stage because they were like, cut. And he said the crew seemed uncomfortable after the scene, too. Miller suggested the interaction was deeper than just the on-screen dynamic, TJ said. It's exactly why he said that, because I'm not funny than he is, all right? And I haven't been in more movies than him. TJ said the moment told him all he needed to know about Ryan Reynolds. Would I work with him again? No, I would not work with him again. I sort of wish him well because he's so good at Deadpool, and I think it's weird that he hates me. I would not have done Deadpool 3 if they came to me and were like, we want you to do Deadpool 3 and we're going to pay you twice as much. I think Ryan Reynolds should make a Deadpool 3 and continue to make movies. I just think he doesn't like me, and I thought it was weird how he expressed that. I'm in a place in my life where I don't need to do Deadpool 3. Miller added he was not asked to return to the franchise. Fascinating story. I will tell you, I've been watching um, Welcome to Wrexham, and... I, I had mentioned my wife, Ryan Reynolds gives me weird vibes, like I've never met him, don't know if I'll ever meet him, not sure I would enjoy his company, he's just, he's giving off a vibe. I have met T.J. Miller, and I know T.J. Miller has some colorful aspects to his resume, and uh, I always found T.J. Miller very comfortable to be around, so who knows? More big stories from the AV Club, an update on the community movie. Here's who's in. Joel McHale, Danny Pudi, Allison Bree, Gillian Jacobs, Jim Rash, Ken Jung. Awesome. Some names still up in the air include Chevy Chase, Donald Glover, Yvette Nicole Brown. Dan Harmon broke this down at New York Comic Con this weekend. As for Chevy Chase, I don't even know if it's legal for him to come back. That might be out of my hands. There may be something I signed for with an insurance company. The AV Club reminded us Harmon and Chase had an infamous falling out behind the scenes. Harmon told Variety... I think Donald's coming back based on word of mouth, but it's just the deal isn't official or wasn't official. It'd be really difficult to commit to doing this thing without Donald. So I believe he's coming back. 
I'll add wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. I think if there's names missing from a list, it's because the names that are on the list, their deals are agreed upon enough that it's okay to say they're on the list. And anybody that's not on a list, it's just not the case yet. So there's nothing official about anybody being out. So the gist here is Troy will be back. Surely will be back. I don't know if they're going to get into the late series editions. Um, they should. They don't have to focus on those folks. I've also in my head, and Dan Horman, obviously, you know, a zillion times better at this than I am trying to figure out, all right, why would the cast get back together? Here's my best idea. Actor Joel McHale is 50 years old. So say he's 51 when it comes out. So it'd be pretty easy to come up with something like the Dean is throwing Jeff a surprise 50th birthday party. And that's why everyone comes back to Greendale. And then, of course, the Dean being the Dean, there's an ulterior motive MacGuffin. They're going to close the school, whatever. And then we could just get back into the normal patterns. That would make a lot of sense to me. But it's Dan Harmon who also created Rick and Morty. So I'm probably not even close to what the real plot will be. I will watch regardless. Jeff Dunham has announced a new tour. His tour is called Still not canceled. Tour kicks off December 28th. Interesting time to kick off a tour. And we'll run through February 26th, that final show at Newark, New Jersey's Prudential Center. Jeff also has a new Comedy Central stand-up. It's called Me the People. That premieres Friday, November 25th. That sounds like the day after Thanksgiving to me. This next story, getting a lot of press. I saw several sources here. I'll curb off the Rolling Stone version of the story. Comedian Ariel Elias was in the middle of her stand-up set when a person in the crowd demanded to know if she voted for Trump. And then another threw a can of beer at her head. Elias told Rolling Stone, in before the heckling, the set wasn't going great. The hecklers were in a large party of approximately 20 people celebrating a, quote, Mexico-themed birthday, unquote. And she says the vibes were off from the beginning. Members of the group, quote, were wearing fake mustaches and had to be told to quiet down before the show even started. A woman in the crowd asks Elias, did you vote for Donald Trump? Comedian responds, did I vote for Donald Trump? What do you think? Here's a question for you. Why would you ask me that in here knowing I'm the only Jew in the room? Are you trying to get me killed? Now, Elias describes the moments Rolling Stone and says the club's logo uses an image of a gun instead of the letter L. The club here is Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club in Point Pleasant Beach, New Jersey. She's clearly trying to bait me into something, so I thought, let me see where she tries to take it on her own. Maybe I can use it to get out of this. She tells the crowd, everybody vote who you want to vote for. I don't care who you voted for. I'm just happy that we're all still here together. The heckler yells, I can just tell by your jokes you voted for Biden. Elias fires back, I can tell by the fact that you're still talking when no one wants you to that you voted for Trump. The woman claims no one told her to stop talking. The comedian said, make some noise if you want her to shut up. And that generates cheers. Elias tries to get back on track and finish her act. Here, I'll tell you the rest of that bit and then we'll move on. I'm so insecure. I went and got an IUD. At that point, someone else in the group threw a can of beer that crashed into the brick wall behind the comedian. A yet different person in the audience said, yo, I'm never coming out with this crowd again. In the video, Elias calmly bent down to pick up the beer and proceeded to chug it. She says, I knew I had to chug it. I was so relieved there was still some left in there after it exploded against the wall. And my adrenaline was going crazy. Even though I don't normally drink before or during sets, I felt like this was a valid exception. The person who threw the beer was ejected. The club apologized, asked her if she was okay and if she wanted to press charges. She said, I don't because I'm never going back to that town again without someone paying me. And the club has booked her to return in April. I don't hide who I am or change how I present myself. I also don't really want to talk about politics on stage. It's just not what I want my stand-up to be. But my perspective is that of a Southern Jew, and I talk a lot about being a woman in body image. I think I'm really good enough at this to make people who disagree with me laugh and enjoy. So yes, I've gotten iced out by crowds. A couple people have walked out every now and then somebody yells something. But I've never gotten half a free beer for it. My message to last night's hecklers is that therapy is great. I highly recommend it. Or just write down your feelings. I promise you'll feel like throwing things less. Several comedians were impressed by how she handled it. Those comedians include Patton Oswalt, Jim Gaffigan, Whitney Cummings, and Judd Apatow. Patton tweeted, Ariel wasn't even doing political material. The drunk heckler was craving what every maggot craves, grievance and revenge, and they'll alter the reality before their eyes to get it. You sound like you voted for Biden? Jim Gaffigan tweeted, um, so many things to say about this, but the big takeaway is that Ariel comedy is super funny and total class. George Takei, you know, Mr. Sulu, he called Elias a hero among us. You know, now that I've read this story for five minutes, is her name Elias? 
E L I A S. I'm not redoing the segment. I apologize. I-, I got your back here, but I suck. Witty Cummings said, For all you who want to make fun of comics for saying we didn't sign up to be physically attacked and put on a pedestal, take a peeky poo at Real Comedy. You're a class act. Valerie Bertinelli, the former Mrs. Eddie Van Halen, said, Jesus, you Ariel Comedy are a goddess. I'm so glad you weren't physically hurt. Chud Apatow, the Republican fear of information and debate, followed by a cowardly exit. America in a microcosm at a comedy club, well handled by Ariel, who is clearly funny and strong and knows what she's doing out there. And the Star Tribune reviewed the Minnesota Comedy Festival. It's a good review, despite the first paragraph I'm going to read. The first paragraph says, There were hitches. Headliner Bobcat Goldthwait canceled two days before opening night because of a bout with COVID. One comic took a look at the festival's newest venue, Palmer's Bar, and canceled her performance. And another comedian's bike got stolen. But for the most part, the festival was a smashing success. Some standouts were Ashley Gavin. The fest's hottest ticket was for a chance to get insulted by this TikTok star and host of the podcast were having gay sex. The New Yorker did not disappoint. Gavin was so busy working the crowd, she barely had time for prepared material, squeezing a six-minute routine on Bumble into her final two minutes. She said, I'm the reverse Ellen. I mean up here, I'm nice out there. Usama Sadiq, in his Minneapolis debut at the 2019 festival, the comic actor showed promise he would one day take his place among the best touring performers in the country. That day has come. That's a mighty praise there. He expertly handled delicate material about race, especially in a bit dissecting how whites and his fellow Desis take different approaches to placing their parents in nursing homes. He also smoothly dealt with loud drunks in the back, showering them with so much love they were left speechless. Pearl Rose, of all the performers exploring dating and mental health, is every new stand-up these days in therapy. She stood out, and thanks to original takes and a perfectly dry delivery, Fabrizio Capano, who I saw up in Montreal... The Star Tribune writes, I don't think I've ever heard a joke about former dictator Augusto Pinochet. Then again, I don't think I've ever seen a stand-up from Chile. Saw him in Montreal. He's very good. Carmen Morales, open for Jackie Cation. She shares her mentor's high-energy, in-your-face delivery. But unlike Cation, she's more interested in getting personal, especially when it comes to lambasting her father and revealing her insatiable sexual appetites. Sounds like a good festival, unless your bike was stolen or the club disgusted you and you went home, or if you got COVID. And Vulture and Union Hall have brought back the weekly comedy showcase in Brooklyn. Tonight, hosted by Jay Jordan, featuring Natalie Alcar, P.D. De Abreu, Arden Mirren, and Asha Ward. You'll find the Vulture Showcase at Union Hall. Meanwhile, in San Francisco, it's the history of Ha Ha, Decades of Bay Area Comedy. San Franciscans can laugh and learn with the authors of Bay Area Stand-Up Comedy, colon, A Humorous History. Authors Nina G. and O.J. Patterson moderate a panel discussion with some of the city's legendary veteran comics, including Father Guido Sarducci. Yes. Tonight, 7 to 9, Throckmorton Theater. And John Cleese has a new show on the UK's right-leaning TV channel, GB News. John told the BBC, GB is not a right-wing channel. It's a free speech channel. He says he's working with GB because the BBC hadn't approached him. And if it did, he would turn them down because I wouldn't get five minutes into the first show without being canceled or censored. That's your comedy news for today. You can follow this show for free on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever you get your shows. See you tomorrow.